And we begin with our two triple option plays, our veer triple, which we call VTO, and our mid triple, I'll call ML3, just to distinguish between, uh, instead of calling everything triple option, kind of gives us its own name. Now, to get to any play, obviously, we must be at this point, first point there. Defensive ID and basic foundation of offense must be in place. Otherwise, you're really going to struggle to put in plays because as we put in plays, we're put in plays in relation to defenses. And if the players don't have a good understanding of defensive identification, then they're really going to struggle. Uh, we like to start with our triple options at an ideal uh, situation because they're more expensive and time-consuming. So we're talking about off-season install probably. But once the triples are in place, pretty much everything falls in place easier because it forces our players to learn and apply rules on the front and on the perimeter more than any other plays in our offense. I do believe that you can install other core run and passing game concepts before you're perfect at these. Um, but I do like to get the ball rolling on them first. Um, JV, middle school, younger teams, uh, you may want to flip your thinking on this a little bit, depending on your situation and the time that you get with those players uh, and how deep you think you can go with them as far as triple option. Because as great of football plays as triple option are, they are expensive and they can they can uh, cause kids to lose a little confidence if they don't have some other feel good plays uh, to go along with them. Like anybody, we use a variety of methods to install the play, especially triple options. I think a good coach is a good teacher because you got to teach and coach the total player uh, cognitively, physically, emotionally, and every other way in the game of football. But we'll use classroom board work to introduce things presentations like this, recordings, anything the players can view and watch on their own and digest it. And y'all know how it is. Some players are getting more from something like this than others. Uh, we use video pass, good video clips, bad video clips to learn from. And I really love quizzes when it's time to, uh, to squeeze the players a little bit and see what they know. But I don't like quizzes unless they're at game speed. Verbally, video, or walkthroughs, they're at game speed. The speed that they would have to make that may not be moving or running, but mentally the, the speed has to be expressed at game speed. And anytime you can get flip coaching going on in your situation, I think it's better where your players are actually teaching and leading sessions. Uh, so ownership is, is a beautiful thing. Here's an example of a quiz I may use with quarterbacks, just testing their ability to identify fronts. I try to give them a clip or a view that they would have in the game, something they could apply. In this case, looking at a defense from the, from the back end and asking how they would identify that front. And in this case, it's a 50, but it's a 50 bear. So using those other ways to express that just to test their knowledge. But I would give them probably about two seconds to do that, uh, make sure they can see it, and then I would click it off. And if it's a video verbal quiz, then they got to call it out. County defenders, I, I think once you get an option football, how you count defenses, not just identify them, uh, is very, very important. We have two basic count systems in our offense, a bob count, big on big, backs on backers. Those two things usually go together in some way or another, where we're counting the big boys, the down linemen, first, second down linemen. And then a man count or a base count is what we call it, where we identify all the defenders from inside out. Um, if we were base blocking something, usually base blocking is used as a backside blocking scheme. We're simply counting defenders from zero on out. Um, and actually we put the center backside if he doesn't have a zero man. Very simple count, but also a very useful bob and base are two very useful count systems that we apply to a lot of our plays. So we get a lot of mileage out of that count system, not just in the option. So here's an example of a bob against a 4-2 or 40 defense as we call it. On the right, we're looking at a bob call where we have first down lineman, second down lineman, and backer. On this side, we count all the defenders. 50, we got a zero nose. To the right, we got a bob count, one, two, backer, one, two, three, base or man count on the left side. Three, three is a little different. Um, when our defense started running this years ago, I really didn't know how to view this because nobody was running it that in our area, at least not in high school. So we had to figure out how do we want to treat this. I tried to make it into the 5-1 family and I just couldn't. So I had to give it its own identification. So we started viewing it a 30 through the eyes of a 40. It's like they take the first down lineman on each side and stack them over the ball. But we always count a stack as play side. So for reference, uh, the stack is the first down lineman, also zero. So half and a half makes that end, second down lineman, and the backer there. And then we count one and two as they unfold on the backside.
for the base side or man side. But this count is considered. Now, we know that stack can unstack backside, and we have to have rules and ways to handle that depending on what the play is. Important option terminology. Um, guys, I'm not going to read these to you, and I certainly didn't define them. I'm going to try to use them in context on film. But this is a, a kind of a small glossary of terms that are very, very important uh, option-related terms that we use in our offense quite a bit with our kids. And our players need to know them, especially quarterbacks and you guys that, that it affects the most. Some of it's tags. VTO, veer triple options, what we call four and five in our offense. Our core plays are one-word play calls or actually one-digit or one-number play calls. Um, conceptually, this is how we would teach a play. Conceptually, it's triple option football and all the advantages that go with that. Biggest thing is – you don't have to block everybody in the front. You get to turn two people loose and read them, which creates huge blocking advantages elsewhere. Um, and, and it takes, you know, again, that's just where advantage, advantages of option football really start to me there is you don't have to read everybody. Veer refers to the angle path of the fullback, not necessarily that we veer block on this play all the time. Sometimes we look like we're more zone blocking. It depends on the look and what we're doing. We do have a defined dive and pitch key. It's where the play starts. And we're always looking for the best way. We want to be able to run uh, our triple options out of all formations versus all, four, all fronts some kind of way if it's available. This is a, a, an expensive play. It's an all-inclusive play with a lot of automatics built into it. And, of course, we have, like anybody would do with their kind of their base play or their core play, the adjustment tags to give it versatility and flexibility. We don't want any front to take this play away, at least not by, by rule. Now, our version of VTO is a little different than a lot of teams run. So when people say, well, they just run the veer, or they run the inside veer, or the outside veer, sometimes those terms can get very uh, loosely interpreted uh, and kind of overlap. This is not true inside veer rules that I use. It, it's we, we use it, what I call combo triple option. It is a, uh, a scheme that came from uh, wishbone rooted principles. And it mixes principles of inside veer and outside veer into one play and one mesh. And that'll make more sense as we get to different defenses. Uh, our O-line splits are a little tighter than maybe a true inside veer team because of how we block things. Uh, but we also want to keep our crease in the B-gap. We don't action key unless it's a three-tech that really expands into the B-gap and crosses our path, and it's a natural recognition by the fullback. Our play side ties in a wall or load scheme. Some people call that seal by rule, but we can also get to arc. And we try to minimize and control our tough read situations, which I consider stack reads and naked meshes to be that. Um, our option rules by position obviously starts with recognizing our, our, our read defenders. We don't want to block the read defenders uh, unless it's a pinch defensive end. Sometimes we still don't block it. Uh, but where our scheme family for this play is combos and cutoffs for our beer triple option. Again, without getting real detailed, I like to let the film do the talking. I think that's better. But on the play side, we're basically combo blocking the first down lineman to the first backer uh, stacked or inside that combo block. Second down lineman is the read. There are other little nuances to the play, but that's a generic rule uh, to the play side. Our covered old lineman is calling the combo. And you see that our play side tackle can wash the dive key that pinches or redirect off a pinch. We have done both, and I'll show you examples of those. Um, the backside, we're basically cutting off and closing gaps using a variety of scoop swap or area block techniques based on how the gaps are threatened. We don't just blindly, you know, run sideways. We try to, to build a little bit of a wall on the backside, but we certainly have to cut off the interior gaps. And if we needed help from an interior offensive lineman, he would be the one to make that call, just like the cover lineman calls a combo. Quarterback, fullback is going to basically uh, veer mesh principles. Now, presentation number three, which would be the next one we're doing, is going to be strictly devoted to veer and pitch concepts and how we teach it, how we rep it, how we talk about it and distinguish between different creases. Very, very important information. Um, it'd be like an air raid team talking about how the, the you know, how they teach the passing game and how they rep the passing game. That's how important this is to us. So I don't I didn't want to do that topic injustice and just barely touch on it. Um, and I didn't feel like I could mix the two 
together in one triple option plays and the mesh and pitch and cover both of them thoroughly in the time that we have. So that will be separate. Our tie backs play side back side. Play side tie is basically a wall blocker. He can become an arc blocker. He become a bonus blocker depending on if he has a tight end, but he has a multi-part rule. Backside ties our pitch man. We call it late mode pitch. We're trying to get five by one in relation to the quarterback and in relation to the line of scrimmage. Split ends, when we started uh, keeping our split ends from huddling uh, years ago, we came up with just a few categories of, of play rules for them. This one is pitch option rules. You can see them there. Very, very simple rules. Love them. And they're just going off the shell of the structure of the defense, apply their rule and what they're blocking for. Tight end. Tight end has a little more involved rule. He's like the tie back. He could be a wall or nail blocker. Usually he's blocking a backer, depending on what path he takes. That's where people sometimes say it looks like inside or outside veer, depending on how he releases. But our rules, it's just one play, and he applies his rule every time. You'll see examples of both. Um, backside, he's a cutoff blocker. Uh, depends on what release he takes, depending on if his C-gap is threatened or not. So here's what it would look like. Uh, against each front, okay? I don't like drawing up plays for kids that much on paper. I don't know how much they can really translate that. But the diagrams we use, zero or the circle is black. That's for blocking. We're going to combo the first down lineman. And our two red defenders for read or dive and pitch. So against the 40 defense, no matter which side we were running, trip, veer, triple, to left or right, you can see who we're comboing to um, and, and then who we would be dive and pitch. Uh, a 3-3 defense, again, how we stack the uh, count the, uh, the middle stack, it shakes out to be a little bit like a 4-2. A 5-1 bear, uh, again, we're comboing that three tech to the single backer, reading in, pitch, and rover. 4-3 defense, uh, comboing the first down lineman usually to the mic. We do have ways to count for what we call uh, a hip stunt there by the backer. And then the force defender could be a safety or corner, depending on who, if they're playing sky or cloud. By rule, we will wall this backer until we can't. And then we can, that's where we can get to an arc scheme. For uh, true inside veer teams are a little different. They're going to always either read that stack and arc. And uh, I, I just, for the time it takes to get good at that, I don't see that front enough and that reaction enough to justify the time. Gets a 50 defense. Our reads are a little different than the true inside veer team. And that's where people would look at us and say, you know, that, that's an outside veer play. And I get what they're saying. But again, to our kids, this is our rules in this one play. We're going to combo the four tech to the backer, whereas most inside veer teams would read him. We will read that guy, but on our mid triple play, which we'll get to next, which I much rather prefer than reading him on the veer path. We'll dive key the end, which a lot of time is a give, but if it got to the pitch, it'd be a safety corner decision. Adjustment tags that we have on this play, just like any bread and butter play for anybody, you're going to have some some tags that you put on it and doctor it up to keep it available. Um, but tags on veer triple option can change the, the dive key, the pitch key, or help us on the perimeter. Uh, red, backer, chase, shade. Again, you can see what they do there, and we'll look at them in context on film. I have clips of each one of those. Um, so I'm going to pop over to Huddle Guys and, and our Veer Triple Clips will go by that order and there'll be a label to let you know so you know what you're looking at. Okay.